so we've been working all morning on the buggy we've got a lot to do we made a list uh which is on camera on screen right now uh of everything we got to get done we're slowly picking away at it it's a bunch of junk which we've only been working on it since i've been working on it since eight i think uh daniel's been working since 10 so getting quite a bit done i've had daniel while i'm wiring and making all my harness and stuff he's attached the steering column to the rack and then he's mounting the seat belts now he had a notch piece of tube and i've just been wiring this box so i've taken this cutting board put some standoffs on it with a uh, quarter inch bolts and I actually got to do a little bit shorter standoffs but uh, this has a relay this is the breaker for the steering uh, column so instead of blowing a fuse out you know we'll just kick a breaker uh, then we have this this is this is a 50 amp relay that works with the switch so when I switch the key switch on it feeds power to this which in return powers this whole uh, distribution block this runs to individual fuses that will be in this fuse and relay box right here that will control so these will run to these fuses out from these fuses into relays so we'll have a fuel pump relay a headlight you know stuff like that Sounds so complicated. a lot of stuff yeah you got it takes some thinking uh, but it's all everything like i said before i solder everything i use waterproof um the heat shrink with the hot glue inside of it it's gonna be super nice if you'll come over to the buggy daniel's working right now but uh, I'll stay on. Don't you get on camera. <laughs> uh, this is a like a Pelican box from Harbor Freight. They're Apache 1800. So this is the main controller for the power steering column. It has a heat sink on the bottom, so I've cut the bottom of the box out and hot glued it hanging out so wind can go across it and it can dissipate heat like it needs to. Well, this box right here, or this cutting board, I can't because the wires aren't run out yet, but it'll set directly above this so you can shut the lid and that'll just be a second level to it. it's really really neat using waterproof connectors uh, we got waterproof um, firewall bungs going through here everything's gonna be super nice on it we're waiting on our battery because we got to build a battery box and then I can start cutting wires the length and stuff but uh, Daniel's about to load some seatbelt tabs on if you want to get get him on camera Yeah, my shocks came. We'll be getting those out here in a few and assembling those because the springs do not come on the shocks. Then we have to get them filled with nitrogen at like an off-road shop. I don't have, I could have spent $250 and bought the kit to fill them myself and then rented a bottle. But I think I can pay like $10 for a shop to fill each one. So about like 40, 50 bucks with... I'm not talking, I'm just tapping. <laughs> <laughs> it's fun working together sometimes. No. Your wife ever says, hey, start a business where we can work together. <laughs> just say no. Okay. Okay, giggle box McGee. You ready? No one can't see. Oh great. Well get where you can. Where are you going? I'm back in here and there. Ready? Yes. Uh, to keep this uh, level, 
with my quantum table we got these blocks that are 150 millimeters tall and that's a perfect standoff knocking the little spatter off to hold this dead where I need it you get what I'm saying cool So we got that X X pop in. We went with a so heavy. Went with the Odyssey battery because these are really good about uh, handling rough bumps, and your battery can internally short if you use like a cheap lawnmower battery. So that's why we're using a really nice Odyssey battery, not sponsored. Hundred and ninety dollar battery. Well, so that was a rough one to buy there. But I built this little battery box today. Um, real clean. So. This is basically going to sit on there like that. And then the battery actually just fits through here to sit down in there. And then I'm building a plate that basically like bolts down over top of the battery. You'll see it. I'll show it when I build it. I'm going to clean my tires. Polish my tires. So we got that battery box all done, mounted in here. This isn't bolted down yet, the hold down. It'll go, a one quarter inch bolt will go there, two will go there, but I do wanna run a rubber like isolator, insulator in between this so it isn't metal on, uh, on top of the battery. I do have a thick piece of foam under the battery. I don't want the battery directly to be touching any metal because vibrations over time could wear a hole in my battery. So I think that looks good right there. You can get the battery out no problemo so this is how the wiring box ended up being everything's not done because we do got to mount all my gauges and i've made this key switch box out of a this is a, a breakaway battery box for a trailer so trailers that have uh trailer brakes have a battery on board so just in case the trailer was to come unhooked this will send a signal and lock up the brake so your trailer just doesn't roll off somewhere so i'm using this and mounting it like kind of there and then you'll have you know electric power steering fuel pump headlights and then a random one and then of course my uh key switch so this will be wired up and stuff in the next few videos i got the fuse box and relay box mounted up there it's all waterproof it's got an o-ring in the lid and it's also got grommets in the bottom then this box you'll notice this pvc elbow i need to go buy a little a few more of these because i'm wanting to run it basically down so water would physically have to go up over and down to get in the box then over here i have one that's basically like an output can you see that mm -hmm. so if we look in here i got the foam in the top of this and that pvc elbow leads directly to this tiny little cpu fan so the cpu fan's blowing down so it's going to suck fresh air in from there and i'm going to also when i do the uh, elbows on this. I'm gonna stuff it full of like Brillo pad to keep bugs and stuff out of it and big debris But that fan will draw air in from that and blow directly down We have just enough room if we slide these wires in. That's why I haven't tightened up any of this You'll look over here that fan will directly blow air onto this controller So if there's any heat inside the box It'll get cooled down and it'll exit through that PVC elbow and I do need to patch up these holes because I didn't need them so I'm just going to put a piece of tape on the inside and hot glue those full. And I still need to run the bead of epoxy on the inside to keep this from, I don't know how good the hot glue is going to hold. I just did that as like a temporary holding thing. So I'll do a bead on the inside. So I think that looks uh, really good. So that sits down in there. Um, I think my wires are grabbing. There we go. So it sits down in there. 
and then this box can close and it closes really tight so water is not going to affect any of my wiring you can see i got a massive harness down here this has got to run to all my gauges um because we're gonna have six gauges we'll have a boost wideband air fuel ratio fuel hand oil temperature oil pressure and a voltage gauge and then also the tag uh, so we have to wait till the engine's on so we can run all the wires back this is the wire we're going zero gauge that's going to run back uh, to the starter because uh the further you go away from your battery the thicker the wire you need to run or you know let's say you get water in your air filter and you set to have to sit there and crank on it uh, you can end up getting your uh, insulation on your wire hot and melt it so we're done fat daddy wire yeah everything's uh going really good we're gonna next video we got our shocks laid out you can see everything those are foa shocks custom built for this buggy uh there will be a little bit of tweaking probably some spring swap outs we need to do but the next video will be extending the cvs putting the shocks on finally testing those out you know by jumping up and down in it and getting more done we've been apologizing but this thing there's a lot of work no apology needed there's a lot of work yeah these final steps are the longest um we got to mount the oil cooler we got to build our pedals run all of our brake lines there's still a lot to do but we're getting it done also make sure to check out the links where you can find everything the battery the boxes everything we've used on this i'll try if i forget something let me know in the comment section but also this uh quick release and go power sports is super sweet and we also have that's all the way in and you can adjust it also a little bit further out for shorter people aka becca mm -hmm. um so it's looking good we'll get this thing uh next video will be next friday on this where the shocks will be mounted and the cvs extended so look out for that the 670 builds uh almost done it takes a lot of time to film the in-depth videos on engines so bear with me on that but we'll be running some fat daddy boost on this thing with a supercharger and hopefully she performs pretty good check out those links make sure to go to rbgcarts.com help support the channel with some merch i don't have nothing on my bald head but we do have hats and stickers we've got some new stickers oh, we're out of hats we're out of hats we don't have hats uh and uh we'll probably get them in you know plenty of time before christmas but yeah, uh we're hoping to restock before christmas yeah so we love you guys thank you so much for watching this is a short but sweet video so come back next friday for another episode on the buggy we love you and god bless